Okay, so today adding and subtracting rational expressions, so now with variables instead of numeric. Um, but today, what's most important is that you have like denominators. So in general, for any real number, a, b, and c, where c doesn't equal zero. So that's a restriction. That must mean the c is my denominator. So if I have a over c plus b over c, we keep the c and add the numerators. It would be the same for subtraction. Okay? So the rules, I don't want to rewrite it twice. The rules are to step one, keep the denominator the same. Step two, add or subtract the numerators and simplify your answer when possible. This wasn't the case, so numerically, when I add two-thirds plus two-thirds, you get four-thirds. You can't reduce. But then when we did seven-tenths minus two-tenths, you get five-tenths, which does reduce to one-half. So you only have to reduce at the end when it's possible. So for every single question, you can go through and get partial credit by just copying your denominator over. So the denominator stays the same. Directions, for example, say express as a single fraction in simplest form. Even when it doesn't say to express in simplest form, your answer should always be in simplest form. And state the restrictions. So um, 3x over 7 plus 4x over 7. When the denominator doesn't have a variable, you won't have a restriction. So there are no restrictions here. Now, to add, the first thing you do is keep the denominator the same. So this is over 7. And then what do you get when you combine the numerators? What is 3x plus 4x, Summer? 7x. Now I check. 7x over 7, can that be reduced? Simplifying fractions, we factor, cancel. There's no factoring here, but since the 7 is connected to the x by multiplication, we can cancel, and we're left with x over 1, which is just x. Now, number 2, the denominators are not the same, so we'll come back to that one. That's the negative 1 rule, so you can think about that. But number 3 and number 4, they are the same. So let's look at the restrictions. Y cannot equal. Do you know the restriction for that expression at this point without factoring? What squared minus 4 is going to give you 0? What's that? 2 and, because of the y squared, we're going to have 2. 2 and negative 2. Yep. Now to actually subtract, we keep the denominator the same, and then I combine the numerator, or subtract. Because you can't take away 2 from y, we just write the difference y minus 2. So that's the answer. Now you need to see if you can simplify that. Is, so the question is, is y minus 2 a factor of y squared minus 4, and it is. So if it is, you want to factor and cancel. y squared minus 4 is y plus 2 times y minus 2. Now I can cancel y minus 2 with y minus 2, and the answer is 1 over y plus 2. Number 4, I'm going to keep the denominator so x squared minus 1, and I want you to take a minute and subtract those two polynomials. So what this is really saying is 6x minus 5 minus 5x minus 6. You can try and do that in your head. What's important is that you distribute the negative all the way through. This subtraction symbol changes both. So what do we get when we subtract 5x 
minus 6 from 6x minus 5. Summer? x plus 1. And when you know, that's a factor of x squared minus 1. So factor x plus 1, x minus 1. Cancel the x plus 1s, and our answer is 1 over x minus 1. Now the restrictions. We can look at the factors. So the factors of the denominator are x plus 1 times x minus 1. Or you can look here, but you always want to look at the original fraction. So the restrictions, x are not equal to positive and negative 1. So back to number 2. Number 2 is the negative 1 rule. So with this question here, we know from a previous lesson that x minus 2 over 2 minus x equals negative 1. Okay? I can change this denominator right here to look like this by multiplying the whole right side by negative 1. So let's do that. So now it comes 4 over x minus 2 plus 7 over, it's really negative 1. Well, let's put the negative 1 out front, actually. So it's plus negative 1 times 7 over x minus 2. What do you do with a plus minus or plus a negative? Because all that does was change it to a negative. What happens in math when you have a plus minus? What one sign does it become? Does it become addition or subtraction? Subtraction. So this really is, when you see a question like this, and you can go right to this. When you have a question where this denominator is the same as this denominator but just switched, you can change it to 4 over x minus 2 minus 7 over x minus 2. It makes it a subtraction problem. Okay, so it changes the order. And what's 4 minus 7 in the numerators? Because we keep the denominator the same. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Now the restriction what minus 2 is uh, 0, that's 2, and same here, 2 minus 2 is 0, so x can't be equal to 2. So if you have a highlighter, it's good to highlight this question here because you may need to come back to it. Let's see if we can speed up on the back. Go ahead and write down your denominators for both 5 and 6, and then we'll combine the top. So first step is always to rewrite your denominator or keep it the same. So this is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. This is equal to 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And now I need to combine the numerators. So when I combine this expression x squared plus 4x plus 8 minus x squared. If you have a negative x squared and you're adding a positive x squared, what happens to the x squared? They cancel out. So those are gone. x squared plus a negative x squared is 0. And we end up with 4x plus 8. We're breaking it down step by step. Here, don't forget to, again, the negative is going to change this term but also the second one. So I would encourage you to rewrite it above and change the signs. Now, when I do 3x minus 2x, I get x. 4 minus 1, we get 3. That is an answer, but the question is, is it the correct answer? It would be the correct answer if it can't be simplified. If it can't be simplified, we're done. So in order to see if I can simplify, we factor and cancel. There's a GCF of 4, so this is 4 times x plus 2. And then the factors of a negative 6, so 1 and 6 
2 and 3 that combine to a negative 1. And remember, too, if x plus 2 is in the numerator, it's probably going to be in the denominator. So if I try negative 3 plus 2, little smile, negative 3x, big smile, 2x, which combines to negative 1x, it works. Now I go ahead and cancel, and we're left with 4 over x minus 3. I forgot the restrictions, and to do the restrictions, we need to go back to the original fraction, which is here, and the factors are here. So the restrictions are 3 and negative 2. Now, 6, the denominator in 6 is a harder type of factoring because of the 2x squared. a is greater than 1. But if you use the factor in the numerator to help you, so set up your two parentheses as there's no GCF. 2, the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. 3 is also prime, so the only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. If this is x plus 3, let's try it here. x plus 3, 3 times 1. It's got to be negative to multiply if I check. Negative 1x, positive 6x, little smile, big smile, combines to the negative 5x. It checks. Okay? So I'm going to undo that so we can go back to the restrictions. Restrictions, I need to look at the denominator. So when I look at the denominator, x can equal, well this one's easy, it's a negative 3. Can anyone see from day 1, there are some of you who could do this in your head, 2 times what minus 1 is 0. So what's the restriction here? 2 times what minus 1 is 0. You could also write it over here. Picture in your head maybe adding the 1 over. Divide by 2, and it's 1 half. Half of 2 is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. To finish, we just simply cancel. I can cancel x plus 3 with x plus 3, so it's 1 over 2x minus 1 is the answer. Now at the bottom, this is very similar, so you can start this one as well or highlight it again. Very similar to the question up on the previous page. Now, if the negative 1 rule changed the addition to a subtraction, what happens, or what do you think happens when you start with a subtraction? It'll change it to, Summer, addition. So when you see the same denominator in different order, we change this to a plus, so it's really 5 over 2x minus 2 plus 2x minus 1, and then you can change the order. Now the denominators are the same. Keep the denominator and add the top. Nothing to combine with a 2x, so this is 2x, and then 5 plus a negative 1 is 4. Restriction. 2 times what minus 2 is 0? Can you see what number that might be? x can equal 2 times, it's the same in either case. If you can't see it, you can factor. This is 2 times x minus 1. This is 2 times 1 minus x. In each case, x can't equal a 1. The answer is not in simplest form, so when you factor out a GCF, this is 2 times x minus 1, this is 2 times x plus 2, then you can cancel the 2's, and the answer would be x plus 2 over x minus 1. For the last question, what can we easily do to this fraction to keep it the same value but make it look like 3x minus 15 when it's x minus 5. Jameson? Multiply both the numerator and denominator because really 3 over 3 is 1. So when you multiply by 3 over 3, 
you're not changing the value of it, you're just making it look different. So this is 12 over 3x plus 15 minus 3 over 3x plus 15. 12 minus 3 is 9. Keep the denominator because they are the same. And then I need to simplify. What do you notice about all the numbers? 9, 3, and 15. They're all divisible by, Summer? 3. So you can divide out the 3 or you can factor. If you factor, it's 9 over 3 times x plus 5. The restriction would be x not equal to a negative 5. 3 goes into 9 3 times. And the final answer would be 3 over x plus 5, which is what you would get if you divided everything by 3. 3 over 3 or x plus 5.